If you really made it, you can buy a Mercedes S-Class. Others dream of an AMG model. Well, I could just buy both in one vehicle. This is the new Mercedes S63 AMG. We'll tell you all about it with Thomas Nautical in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go here. We have two cars for you initially. This one here in Nautic Blue, chrome frames and so on, more the classic style. And behind it, we have the little bit more sinister styling, the darker styling in diamond white Magno, matte white paint and with black accentuations, a knife package plus a carbon package. We'll tell you all about it in detail and we'll drive it today here, of course, in the Los Angeles area. Remarkable here at the front, for the very first time, an S-Class gets a true AMG grille. You can here see it with the vertical fins and no standing Mercedes star on top, but the AMG badge. This vehicle here is equipped with the knife package and on top of that, the carbon fiber package. That means we have the carbon fiber insert here in the lower part and a rather darker frame around the grille. Turning indicators in the front, they replace the daytime running light in an elegant way. 5 meters 34 or 210 inches is the length of this vehicle and powertrain wise we have the V8 which is powering both axles actually, rear wheel bias, it's an all-wheel drive system plus an electric motor that is just powering the rear axle, soon more to that concept. Wheels, either 20 inch in Europe and optional 21 inch in the US, these 21 inch wheels are standard, of course different stylings, really massive and then you can also get optionally these carbon ceramic brakes here with the bronze calipers, also a very impressive element. The carbon fiber pack also adds more carbon fiber here to the side mirrors and also to the lower spoiler part and you have this classic S-Class design style. Technology wise it also gets the rear axle steering as standard together with the anti-roll control. The rear axle steering here, however, is a little bit limited. The standard S-Class, even the plug-in hybrid, would come to a maximum of 10 degrees steering in the opposite direction. Here it's just three degrees, and that is one disadvantage that you have the rear electric motor here because it reduces the amount of space you can use, for example, also then for turning in the wheels at the rear axle. Towards the rear, you can see the C-pillar is always the defining design element of an S-Class and also that this part here is directly always up in the middle part of the rear wheel. Very interesting, isn't it? More a round design at the rear and the air suspension, by the way, is standard and over a speed of 120 kilometers an hour or over 75 miles an hour, it lowers the vehicle automatically by about 10 millimeters. And the overall top speed is with a special unlock 290 kilometers an hour, that's 180 miles per hour. Turning indicators in the rear, this top part here with an element segmented view, that looks very modern. Here with the blue vehicle, we can see how it looks like with the chrome frame around the front grille. I think this more elegant styling more fits to an S-Class. That's at least my take. What's yours? And I especially appreciate here these really polished wheels. Looks so cool, especially in contrast to the blue vehicle color. And the same counts here for the chrome frames. It just adds this extra piece of elegance to the vehicle. In the rear, biggest difference is once again exhaust here in the brighter side without the special black accentuations and also more chrome here. Under the hood we have ta -da, the 4 liter V8 bi-turbo together with the electric drive we have 800 horsepower of system output. The strongest S-Class ever. 3.3 seconds is the acceleration figure, 2.1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And how do they achieve that? Well, the normal plug-in hybrid of the Mercedes S-Class has a battery capacity of around 29 kilowatt hours. This battery is a performance battery inspired by Formula One tech from their racing team. 13 kilowatt hours, so less than half the capacity size and also less pure electric range. With a normal S-Class PF, I could score some 80, 90 kilometers an hour, uh, sorry, 80 or 90 kilometers pure electric range, some 50 miles. Here it would rather be some 20, 30 km kilometers max, so some 10, 15 miles or something. Then again, you have better recuperation and a stronger horsepower output 
yeah, this is pro and con of this system. On the passenger side here, you have the fuel fill. And on the driver's side, you have the AC plug, 3.7 kilowatt. Key fob with AMG badge. Flush door handles, you swipe them or open close with the key fob. They come towards you, but the haptic feedback they give you is kind of weirdo, I would say. So I'm not a big fan of that. And the aerodynamic advantage is also limited. Door closing sound, it's really cool actually. But for the S-Class, of course, there's then the option of the soft close like this. Inside of the doors, you have some nice carbon fiber decal element there, but then a lot of high gloss black piano like I use. And this here is without any feedback for the seat controls, so a step backward in comparison to the previous S63, I think. Seats so far, animal skin only. They say they are developing alternatives, but of course, that's too late. It should already be available. Seating position, of course, luxury sedan like. However, I think seat ergonomics wise, Mercedes is at this moment not on top of its game. I like the grip here, the microfiber grip of the steering wheel. And here, this AMG steering wheel is always sporty, not only visually, but also, you know, how you can grab it and so on. It just has the better size. This vehicle is equipped with the panoramic roof, front and rear, it's split, and in the front, you can actually also open it. And with 189 or 6 foot 2 you still have some headroom here in the front. You can see it's not the tallest opening, but still a pretty cool option to have. Interior cockpit overview here with the vertical screen. And I think it's good that we don't have this EQ hyper screen here. I think this is a better solution because then you have more of this decor element like here with carbon fiber, but also other ones are available and you can already see the ambient lighting going around. Of course, you can change the colors of the ambient lighting. So many are available. Of course, even cooler in nighttime driving. On this AMG specific steering wheel, you have these controls here, for example, for the driving modes. EL would be the pure electric one. And then here when I switch to sport, you hear it when the engine goes on sport plus, then the exhaust note is more prominent and on the left side, you control, for example, the suspension stiffness, or you can also uh, tune the sound up and so on. So really flexible and you can easily do that all while driving. And here in the instruments, you can switch from the classic view to the sport view or also super sport. Yeah, it goes faster and faster <laughs> up to track pace. And you can also get this head up display. Infotainment system has this inbuilt GPS. It's also decently responsive and quick. This is the main overview. The climate unit here, it's not too hard to control it. Yes, I do prefer real buttons and knobs and so on, but for a digital solution, you can live with it. Hey, and have you seen that? Here the climate changing ambient lighting function. That looks amazing, doesn't it? When you go warmer or colder and that even runs through the rear doors. Wow, and that optional Burmester sound system here gives a really, really crisp sound indeed. Just remember, the Burmester sound system always try to make the sound most authentic as possible as the original source. They don't deliver this bass intensive club sound. And you can see here, this is the Apple CarPlay integration, wireless or wired, and the same counts for the Android Auto. Middle console here in the front, cup holders, but they don't hold higher bottles tight enough. USB-C charger, inductive charger, and here the split armrest with more charging. Look at that. Now it's time to check out the rear seating area. First of all, when I take a seat in the left part here, this is the seat as I would be driving. You can see here, there's of course the long wheelbase version, and then I have a lot of leg room left, although I'm driving in the front. Headroom. And I lean backward here is also fine. And then you can get different setups here. This one is a five seater and you can fold up this middle part here. Well, sitting in the middle part is yeah, not the focus, not too comfortable, but for short ways it would work. And then I switch over here. Yeah, I took my shoes off before. Here we can fold down this then as a middle console. You have more space in here, inductive charging pad. You also have this separate screen you can take out and then you can uh, control here, for example, um, you know, like the seating and massage functions and, and so on. But you can also control it here at the rear seat entertainment system. And I really like these buttons that control the rear shade, the upper shade, and also the shades for the side windows. So here you can lower or higher the window 
and just pull it one more time and then the shade goes up so easy solution second button i showed you underneath that is then for this top shade there and this is just the shade is no opening whatsoever but also very easy control and the last button then there for this rear shade and you can use these mercedes headphones they have actually very good passive noise cancelling so i can't hear anything going outside around me anymore now and if you press this magic button here then you get this executive position here the chauffeur mode or being chauffeured mode i cannot stretch my legs entirely that's however complaining on a very high level here with 189 or 602 but in the audi a8l or in the bmw 7 series i can stretch my legs a little bit further you can see the lower calf rest went up that's really comfortable also the foot rest and so on and yeah that's a very great and relaxing position then you can also activate the massage seats uh, alongside yeah that's pretty pretty amazing isn't it by the way if you wonder can the driver still see the side mirror yeah that's indeed a problem here I recently talked to the chauffeur driver in the 7 series and he actually told me that there it was no problem because there the seat is a little bit smaller the front seat is kind of like small folds together a little bit better and then you can basically uh, still watch the side mirror but here it's really uh, a problem yeah but in this case probably you say like i don't care as an <laughs> executive person in the rear especially with these microfiber cushions here beautiful Ooh, and here we go automatic seat belt reaches and you can also get these inflatable seat belts it's really cool it, it looks and feels a little bit weird but they are actually in the case of a crash they kind of blow up like a seat belt airbag and then they make the area bigger where the seat belt hell, um, hits the body and therefore all the pressure is evenly distributed that's actually a pretty cool safety idea and you can get this small fridge here to store your precious bottles in this case only water because hey it's an s63 so at any time i want to be able to jump from the being chauffeured position to the driver's position back again to floor it out myself for such a large vehicle three and five liters of trunk capacity is relatively small however it's longer than a meter of 40 inches that you can use and there is no separate step in here that's the same as the normal plug-in hybrid s-class of course it's not too wide you can see here this is in the back part more like yeah, a little bit over 80 centimeters or 32 inches this big piece there by the way you don't have to have it this is actually the small fridge and you can just take it out and here a second interior styling for you in brown i think better than red definitely isn't it and listen to this mad wood deco element i think that's pretty beautiful isn't it sport plus let's go oh. holy moly Whew. well that kind of was like a zero to 50 miles an hour and i mean yeah there was a situation where you say like for safety reasons i need to accelerate really hard to get on the road really quickly before the next traffic is coming up and you see that was an acceleration basically in the corner but it was very safely delivered also due to that all-wheel drive system and so on pretty cool right so and that easily you can reach the speed limit in the sport plus mode you hear more of that engine everything is pronounced from that engine sound as well and you can also go back to the comfort mode it's a little bit more silence also the air suspension rules are a little bit softer but I have to say, even in that Sport Plus mode, yes, when the air suspension goes a little bit stiffer, you feel you have more control of the, of, of the, you know, of the whole vehicle. That anti-roll control also acts in a way that the car doesn't lean to the sides. But it still gives you the S-Class feeling, even though it is in the Sport Plus mode. Not that floaty ride, no. For that, you have to go then to the comfort mode. And that, to me, is also a crucial thing, that when you are in the comfort mode, it still feels more or less like a normal S-Class. And I think that's a good decision here because when you think about like a C63 AMG, there the C63 feels way different than the normal C-Class. But here I think S-Class always has to feel like S-Class, but due to that wide span, you can make it a race machine then on hitting that knob. 
Of course, the big question is, as for the powertrain, how is the power delivery from that electric motor? Well, there is also this EL mode where you drive pure electrically and you can also just accelerate by that and use the electric motor. That's possible, but as I said, driving it pure electric is not like the main focus of this vehicle. Oh, the cops are already waiting for me. They're probably out of group fans watching us going by. <laughs> yeah, that's why you should keep the speed limit. It's not very easy with this vehicle here. It always tempts you to go even faster. But when you hit the accelerator pedal here with the electric motor, you feel you're getting pushed from the rear. It's actually a good, good feeling. And when you are in the normal driving modes or comfort modes, sport mode here, when both are combined, you hardly feel what is going on. The only thing you do slightly notice, and I felt the same with the AMG GT four-door, where a similar system is being applied, especially also on the racetrack at that time, because the electric motor reacts so quickly, like here, you feel that in the first moment you have this push, pure electric, and then the combustion engine sets in. And is that a good feeling or is that artificial? I think this leaves a lot of interpretation open because you can say, hey, it's a special thing. It gives you this kind of technology feel of the vehicle. But if you want more this purest experience, then it is something that speaks against it. By the way, beautiful highway number one here, close to Malibu. And maybe when you know the area, you know that there are also some nice winding corners here. And here we go. There they are. Ah, it's lovely when you hear that V8 and going uphill. And this is also one of the cases where they designed the performance battery for, that you have the performance, the maximum performance at any time, even if you're going uphill, for example, for a longer period of time. But yeah, to be honest, I personally think that normal plug-in hybrid battery where you have higher electric range would have been fine as well. I mean, you have the 4-liter V8 bi-turbo here under the hood that gives you more than enough power. And a racetrack use, or like a Formula 1 like use, is not so realistic for this vehicle. This is what the vehicle is actually also for. Not only nice acceleration when you're cruising or maybe some nighttime drive. Maybe showing off a little bit and you know but here that you can have this luxury sedan and at the same time have great agility and the cool thing is to me the steering is a really nice combination also with the rear axle steering it feels very light and sporty although it is a super heavy vehicle and one of the disadvantages of the battery or this plug-in hybrid system in general is that the car is heavier but due to that anti-roll stabilization the rear axle steering, the direct crisp steering input, and the great chassis and suspension work, they kind of even out this negative effect. At some point, of course, especially when you're going downhill or when you're really way fast in the corners, then you can't deny this effect. But as far as it is possible, it still feels great in driving. It's so much fun, actually. How is it for the, for the passenger? <laughs> really nice, yeah. Yeah, because I, I I really like to ask the passengers because sometimes they feel like oh, I you know feel a little bit stressed on the body or something. But when the passengers are still relaxed, when it's sporty driving and they enjoy it as well, then you know that it's a great vehicle. And wow, I mean, you don't even feel the length or the long wheelbase of the vehicle. That is the cool thing. And this is really a big difference here when you are in that sport plus mode. S63 and normal S-Class. This is where the AMG version really shines. I told you earlier, when you're going straight and want to cruise again, go to the comfort mode, make it a normal S-Class, and then put in the Sports Plus mode and it becomes something completely different. Do I really need the hybrid system for that? In my opinion, not. It feels great, it has great power, no doubt about that. And yes, you have an even more instant acceleration somewhat, but I would have been totally fine if they would have just left out this battery system, to be honest, you know. So it has great performance, but it's not necessary really to achieve 
the great fun driving experience that you have just by the steering and the chassis and so on and so on and in a way it kills to me a little bit of this purest feeling because I want to hear that V8 growling a little bit more and I want basically to wait a little bit on it to react. Do you know what I mean? So I in a way would prefer it to be a little bit less performant, maybe on paper, but better performing, you know, from the gut feeling. You know, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, but this aspect on the one hand, on the other hand, on paper, of course, even more performance. That is what this e-performance version of the S63 here now delivers. And we have a nighttime driving experience for you on special request because I know you love that to see a special luxury car, especially also with the ambient lighting here, by the way, the IWC watch or clock in the digital way. You can also start that as a stopwatch. That's very interesting, isn't it? Because there's no analog one left. They came up with the idea then to make it digital. You can set the ambient lighting, by the way, also on this adaptive mode that it switches, you know, slightly, slowly from time to time. You can also deactivate it if it's just too much playing around for you. And you also have some more effects of the ambient lighting. Showed you that to you earlier, like here, the climate control. That's always a funny thing. And for example, also, there's an exit warning over the ambient lighting, for example, when you want to get out of the vehicle and there's someone next to you, the car is actually seeing that, then it also has this red flashing, for example. So let's go here, a little bit more of the city traffic, and I can be in the electric mode, for example, to have no emissions then locally. When you press this button, by the way, you can also set three different recuperation stages. And in this case in here, for example, strongest recuperation, when I go off the throttle, it really reduces yeah, in almost to a one pedal driving feeling, or you can just set it to a level one and then it's not too much, or level zero even. Of course, you can always recuperate by pressing the brake pedal. That is also possible. Yeah, I mean, that is something that Mercedes has figured out very well, this nighttime driving with the ambient lighting and so on. Always pretty cool to do that. Let's see, turn, make a left turn here. Yeah, so this makes it always an experience when you drive at night. Here you can see how it switches then a little bit around on this purple style, and it can also wanders from left to right. Um, it is not as extreme as in the all electric vehicles where you also have this um, a special energy mode where it reacts to the throttle and the brake. That's, I think, a little bit too much here by that. I think still a nice compromise, I would say. Oh, here, <laughs> the, the, the stopwatch just ran further. You can also reset it or pick different modes, like see the energy flow of the battery. Maybe a cool thing for the passenger to see, for the driver. Yeah, I think you should just concentrate on the road. And now tune in to more S-Class content or our recent big comparison review, Mercedes S-Class versus BMW 7 Series.